Dr. Namdi Azikwe was a visionary leader, a passionate advocate for African independence, and the first president of Nigeria. He was a true pillar of hope and symbol of the aspiration of a nation seeking freedom from colonial rule. Hi, I'm Obehi Ewafu, the author of the storytelling series for small businesses and content creators. In Obehi podcast, we talk about the power of your story, your narrative, and why you should own your voice. Whether you are a small business owner, a content entrepreneur, or you simply want to build your influence, storytelling is probably going to be your best instrument to connect with your audience. So join the awakened few who are owning their voices. Now let's get started with today's episode. Today, we intend to dive into the remarkable life of Dr. Nandi Azikwe, highlighting his key accomplishment and emphasizing why he should be remembered as a true hero in Nigerian and African history. Early Life and Education The child that would later be known as Dr. Nandi Azikwe was born on November 16, 1904, in Zugeru, Niger state of northern Nigeria. For 14 years, from 1902 until 1916, Zugero was the capital of the British Protectorate of Northern Nigeria, and it was also the place where the name Nigeria was said to have been first proclaimed by Frederick Lugard. 1904 was obviously a time when most of Africa was witnessing the oppressive grip of European colonialism. Looking at his name, Azikiwe, an Igbo name which signifies my father is alive, you can almost wonder how he got to be born in northern Nigeria, which is predominantly Hausa Fulani people. Well, there is an explanation. His father, Obededom Chukwemeka Azikiwe, originated from Onisha and he served as a clerk in the British administration of Nigeria which required him to travel extensively. That was how the Azikiwe family got to northern Nigeria. From an early age, Azikiwe, popularly known as Zik, demonstrated remarkable intellectual acumen and unwavering commitment to education and learning. His educational journey took him through a multiple of primary and secondary mission schools situated in Onisha, Calabar, and Lagos. In 1925, he embarked on a transformative chapter of his life when he arrived in the United States, immersing himself in various academic institutions. Azikiwe's relentless pursuit of knowledge and intellectual growth bore fruit as he obtained numerous certificates and degrees, including a bachelor's and master's degree from Lincoln University in Pennsylvania. Additionally, he further expanded his academic achievement by attending a second master's degree from the esteemed University of Pennsylvania. In 1935, Azikwe ventured to the Gold Coast, now Ghana, where he played a pioneering role in igniting the flames of nationalism. The following is a quote from an online group which I think is called USA African Dialogue Series. By 1935, when Azikiwe returned to Africa and settled in the Gold Coast, Francis Kwame Krumah was still in a Catholic seminary studying to be a priest. It was through Azikiwe's active journalism and his address to the Ghana Teachers Union that Kwame first met Zik, who began to mentor him and in fact convinced him to seek further education in the US. He gave him introductory and recommendation letter to the old school in Likon, in which Krumah was enrolled with other men who had been inspired by Zeke. End of quote. It was during this time that Azikiwe established a nationalist newspaper, becoming not only a prominent figure but also a mentor to Kwame Krumah, who would later become the president of Ghana. After a period of impactful engagement in the Gold Coast, 
Azikiwe returned to his old beloved country, Nigeria, in 1937. Foiled by his experience abroad and armed with a burning desire for change, he took on multiple roles within the country. In Nigeria, Azikiwe's passion for the dissemination of information and the power of the written word led him to find and oversee different newspapers that serve as an influential platform for social dialogue. Simultaneously, he ventured into the realm of politics, first aligning himself with the Nigeria Youth Movement and later, in 1944, co-founded the National Council of Nigeria and the Cameroons, NCNC. The NCNC, with its growing identification with the Igbo people of southern Nigeria, became a significant force in the pursuit of Nigeria independence. The year 1948 marked a significant milestone for Azikiwe, as with the support and backing of the NCNC, he secured a position in the Nigeria Legislative Council. This achievement solidified his influence and positioned him as a key figure in Nigerian politics. Subsequently, he went on to serve as the Premier of the Eastern Region from 1954 to 1959 further cementing his role as a leader who was dedicated to the advancement and welfare of his people. Championing Pan-Africanism Nandi Azikiwe's legacy is one of intellectual prowess, tireless activism, and unwavering commitment to Nigeria's progress. Remember that by this time, most of African countries were still under the domination of European colonialism or if you like, enslaved people in their own land. So the fire for freedom was burning in the heart of many Africans, particularly with those who have had the chance to travel abroad and saw the European hypocrisy or the sharp contrast between what the European colonialists were practicing in Africa and what they were living in their own countries. Returning to Nigeria with an enlightened prospect, Azikiwe became a tireless advocate for Pan-Africanism firmly believing in the unification of the African continent. Through his newspaper, The West African Pilot, he fearlessly voiced the concern and aspiration of Nigerians and Africans, becoming a prominent voice for independence and self-determination. His journey from humble beginning to becoming a catalyst in education, journalism and politics served as an enduring testament to the power of education and the indomitable spirit of an individual who is dedicated to effecting a change. Sure, the people who believe in change and have a good level of initiative always find a way to make change happen. And they do this by leveraging everything within their possibilities. This is what you will see in the life of Azikiwe. His charisma, oratory skills, and his ability to inspire the masses were unparalleled, and it soon became a beacon of hope for millions across Africa. As he faced the Nigerian nationalism, Azikiwe worked tirelessly to unite diverse ethnic groups and forge a national identity rooted in shared value and aspiration. The Path to Independence Zik clearly navigated the complexity of Nigerian politics and played a vital role he negotiated the Nigerian independence from British colonial rule, which was achieved on October 1, 1916. The people of Nigeria cannot continue to accept as their destiny the denial of human rights. We too have a right to live, to enjoy freedom, and to pursue happiness like other human beings. That is a clip from Dr. Nandi Azikiwe speaking in 1949 at the rally for Nigeria independence at Trafalgar Square, London. Azikiwe's unwavering dedication to the cause of liberation, his diplomacy, and his wise leadership was instrumental in laying the foundation for a new era in Nigerian history. He led the NCNC with firm determination into the consequential federal election of 1959, a pivotal junction preceding Nigeria's long-awaited independence. Through strategic alliances, he succeeded in establishing a provisional government 
alongside the influential Northern People Progress. However, it was Abu Bakr Tafawa Balewa, the deputy leader of the Northern People's Congress, who assumed the significant role of Prime Minister. Azikiwe, in turn, assumed largely ceremonial position as President of the Senate, Governor General, and eventually President, becoming the first President of Nigeria. With independence came the birth of a nation, and in 1963, Nandi Azikiwe was inaugurated as the first President of Nigeria. As President, he advocated for unity, social justice, and the eradication of poverty. After years of agitation, said a New York Times article, Dr. Azikiwe became Governor General of the Nigeria Federation at independence from British in 1960 and President in 1963, when the country was declared a republic. In office, he established institutions to promote education, economic growth, and cultural preservation recognizing that a prosperous and inclusive society could only be built through the empowerment of its citizens. Nandi Azikiwe was extremely knowledgeable about politics, communication and journalism, and he knew what he was talking about as a political actor. Apart from building up a strong political opinion of the kind of leadership he wanted, he was also able to influence other African leaders. Igana, as already stated, he was a mentor to Kwame Kruman, and according to the New York Times article earlier cited, Dr. Azikiwe taught political science at Lincoln University for three years in the early 1930s before returning to Africa, where he founded the first of five newspapers he would create, the African Money Post in Accra, Ghana, in 1934. Dr. Azikiwe was certainly an ambitious leader. He wanted Nigeria to play an exemplary leadership role in Africa, and he was not afraid to drag most of the movers and shakers in Africa and among the African diaspora into his leadership philosophy. That was how he got Martin Luther King Jr. to his inauguration in Lagos in 1963, inviting Dr. Martin Luther King to his inauguration. Well, I don't know what will happen now. We've got some difficult days ahead. But it really doesn't matter with me now because I've been to the mountaintop. I don't mind. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over. And I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you. But I want you to know the night that we as a people will get to the promised land. So I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. On the website of Stanford University, there is a letter from Dr. Nadia Azikiwe dated October 26, 1916. The letter was addressed to Martin Luther King Jr inviting him to attend his inauguration as the Governor General and Commander-in-Chief of Nigeria on 16 November 1916. Here is the letter and it reads, My dear Reverend King, this is to inform you that I have included your name in the list of invitees to attend my inauguration on November 16, 1916, when I will be sworn in as Governor General and Commander-in-Chief of the Federation of Nigeria. The occasion will be of holistic interest because it will be the first time in our national history when a person of African descent will be assuming the high office of head of state in Nigeria as representative of Her Majesty the Queen, head of the Commonwealth. I hope that when the official invitation reaches you, 
you will be disposed to accept sin. I am looking forward to an early reunion with you. With kind wishes, sincerely yours, sign Dr. Azikwe. As of the time of this recording, I did not get a letter of direct reply from Martin Luther King Jr. However, I got another letter, at this time by Dr. King, and it was addressed to Kwame Krumah, the first president of Ghana, and it reads, Dear Dr. Krumah, I have been intended to write you ever since I left Ghana in 1957 after having a most rewarding experience at your independence celebration. Words are inadequate for me to express my appreciation to you for the hospitality that you extended to me and my wife. Going forward, towards the end of the letter, Dr. King added, I certainly hope that our path will cross again in the not too distant future. If I come to Nigeria next year for the independence celebration, I will certainly plan to stop by very sincerely yours, Martin Luther King Jr. Yes, Dr. King did honor and participated in the inauguration of Nandi Azikwe as Governor General and Commander in Chief of Nigeria on 16 November 1916. And that is a testament to his caliber of person and the people he wanted to associate with. But everything wasn't always rosy for Nandi Azikwe as a political leader and public figure in Nigeria. The saying that uneasy lies the head that wears a crown would be true in his case and on multiple occasions. One such occasion was during the Nigerian Biafra War, a few years after independence from Britain. Nandi Azikwe and the Nigerian Civil War. During the Nigerian Biafra conflict that spanned from the 6th of July 1967 to the 15th of January 1917, Azikwe initially lent his support to his fellow Igbo brother. Display of wavery commitment, he embarked on extensive travel in 1968, advocating for the recognition of Biafra and seeking assistance from other African nations. In an article, Nadi Azikwe and the Nigeria Civil War on Independent, it was reported, and I quote, One incontrovertible evidence of Zik's support for the rebel remained the winning of diplomatic recognition for Biafra. Zik made a grand tour of Africa, visiting such countries as Ivory Coast, Tanzania, and Zambia just before recognition was accorded. And here, it can be very tricky. And I want to believe you understand what I mean. For a man who has been advocating for Pan-Africanism, mentoring such an important figure as Kwame Krumah, and his wealth of exposure overseas to start promoting a secessionist agenda was quite complicated to say the least. Where well, that is the nature of politics, sometimes it is far deeper than it usually appears on the surface, and most political literature is full of such instances. However, as the war progressed and the realization of its futility setting, Azikwe made an important decision in 1969. Understanding the dire circumstances surrounding the war, he shifted his allegiance to support the federal government. And that one decision will remain a mixed feeling among many Igbo people of Nigeria to date. Following Olusegun Obasanjo's transition of power to civilian rule in 1979, Azikwe pursued the presidency as a candidate of the newly formed Nigeria People's Party (NPP). However, his aspirations were met with disappointment as he faced defeat in the presidential race. In the lead-up to the 1983 election, the NPP became part of an informal coalition of opposition party known as the Progressive Party Alliance PPA. The coalition, although fragile in nature, was aimed to challenge the ruling party. Nonetheless, internal division prevented consensus on a single presidential candidate, resulting in the feeding of two candidates, Azikiwe representing the NPP and Obafemi Awolowo representing the United Party of Nigeria, UPN. Azikiwe and Awolowo 
long-standing political rival. Often in disagreement, vie for the presidency within the framework of the strained coalition. By the time the election arrived, the coalition had significantly deteriorated, lacking the necessary cohesion. Consequently, neither Azikiwe nor Awolowo emerged victorious, making a disappointing outcome for both leaders. These are just some of the passages most leaders go through in their quest to lead a people. It's not always simple and ever will be in dealing with the complexity of politics. Throughout this significant chapter of Nigerian history, Nadi Azikiwe's action and decision exemplify his unwavering commitment to his people and the pursuit of a united Nigeria. Though met with challenges and political rivalries, Azikiwe's influence remained profound, leaving an indelible mark on the nation's political landscape. Legacy and Remembrance Nandi Azikiwe's legacy goes beyond his accomplishment as a statesman in Nigeria. He should be remembered as a symbol of resilience, tenacity, and the indomitable spirit of the Nigerian people. His vision for a united, prosperous, and independent Africa continues to inspire generations. Azikiwe's contribution to the African diaspora, particularly in advocating for the right and dignity of black people, resonate globally. As we reflect on his life and achievement today, let us be inspired to uphold the value he championed and work towards a brighter future for all.